will probably may not sound very loving. Okay. All right. You know, I've been uh, I've been working. I mean, I've been uh, I've had a lot of experience with, in sort of twelve step rooms with um, with addicts and uh, people of different vibrations. Now, as soon as I start, um, there's something mystical that happens. You know, in uh, uh, I'm going to talk about twelve step. When when someone has the courage to face their problems uh, and seek spiritual help their energy in a split second, it actually goes, their, their energy shifts in a split second. You know, if I met someone in, in the rooms and they were like suicidal and drinking alcohol and drugs, but they suddenly said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to surrender this mm -hmm. and give my life to God, do whatever it takes to get the light back in my life. Even though a minute ago, you know, if I'd seen them like 20 minutes ago, I'd have ha I'd been repulsed by their energy they would probably have this kind of like, oh, your, your vibration, I don't want to be. It's like, it's, it's what I call a, a draining vibration. Mm -hmm. and, and intuitively, there is something intuitive tells me to avoid that energy. It's very needy. Mm -hmm. It's almost got a, like this negativity coming off. And I think there's a natural instinct to not want to be next to that type of energy. Now, someone can have a really bad story and they can suddenly pursue the light. And when I work with people who decided, even though they might have come from the most horrific backgrounds, that they want to pursue a solution, suddenly it's like they give energy to me. Their vibration lights up, and uh, it's a joy to be with them. But intuitively, there is a natural intuition to stay away from people which I call have, um, let's call it reversed energy. They're not at yet at energy a positive. Vampire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. So. And I think that's a natural spiritual intuition. Now, if, and I think I always trust that, and I stay away from people with reversed energy, because it's like, and it's not that I don't want to help people, but mm -hmm. I want to, it's like, almost like divinity, because we know with muscle testing that your body goes strong with things which are good for you, and your body goes weak. And I think that is divine guidance. Like if I meet a person and they collapse my energy, then that for me is like God's guidance to me that avoid this person, you know. Now, it doesn't mean, I, th I think everyone has free choice, you know, and I might one day meet a person with what I call reversed energy and decide I want to save that person. Uh, if I ever did want to do that, generally speaking in life, uh, I love helping people who want to be helped. That's different. But mm. trying to help someone that I feel needs help, but they're not yet choosing the help. Mm. I don't know if this makes, yeah. Yeah. makes um, mm. uh, is, yeah, I'm not <coughs> trying to say I want to be horrible to people. But, um, but if I ever did do that, uh, I, I, generally, I generally hope I wouldn't want to do that. But it might happen one day. This poor person, they don't want the help. and They haven't chosen the light. But I'm going to try and, and help them. I think that's possible, yeah. So it could happen in all kinds of... Then I'd have to, like, choose to transcend their energy. Mm -hmm. Now, I could choose to transcend their energy from a distance and cut my relationship, or I could try and engage in a relationship with them and transcend them at the same time, which would be the hardest thing to do. So it'd be like, oh, I'm going to take on all this work. For me, it'd be like, my God, that's a lot of work to do that, you know, I'd probably have to, I'm not sure why I would do that, <laughs> like, but, but that's, a lot, that's a lot of spiritual work yeah. to transcend that. I think it's a great, an act of great love to try and do that, to use such amount of hours and hours of spiritual work and transcending to try and pull them into the light. It might, you might even bring them into the light, but I mean, just the thought of it is that's so much work. You know, uh, but if you if you want to do that, you have free will to do that. So let's say let's say I had a, let's say I, I went out to a rave club and I saw this girl and she was just taking her drugs and booze and whatever and uh, and doing. I go well, I like that girl and she doesn't really want to work a spiritual program, but I'm going to transcend it. So that that's a lot of work and it's up to it's a, it's a lot of. Um, so I'd have to, I, but I would be, okay, so what does it mean? What do I mean transcending? 
Well, there's different aspects, you know. I, let's say I'm attracted to the woman. There's lust there, you know. She's, she's really pretty, you know. Uh, so, all right, I, I'll sit with that energy of lust and, and take it out. Try and, like, get to a place of neutrality around that energy of lust. Then there is the, um, oh, she's got really pretty hair, or whatever it is. Okay, so I'll have, how do I transcend pretty hair? Well, I, I place, uh, whatever it is, whatever, you know, she's got a nice bob on her head, or whatever it is. So I place my, my meaningful bobs. I place this woman's meaningful bob hair into God's love. I pray for her. Okay, so it's like, whatever it is. So, so. So it's like I have to sacrifice that I enjoy her bob hair, you know, so I can see her and wait until it becomes meaningless. You know, to, uh, to sit with the lust energy and try and release all of that, the bob hair. Then there's the thoughts of, I need, to, you know, she's drinking and drugging, but then I have to transcend my desire to stop her from drinking and drugging. I have to completely surrender that into the light. So these thoughts that keep coming, I wish you'd stop drinking and taking the, the, those drugs. I have to transcend my need to want to rescue her because it's, it's a low vibration. If I'm holding a thought like stop drinking, stop drinking, I'm cutting off the light if I'm in her company and I'm having this thought go in my mm. head, I wish you'd stop drinking. Or even if I say it, like stop drinking now, that's like, it's not, it's actually I'm, I'm cutting off the channel of light. So I can't save her, but if it's God's will, the miracle may happen for her if I can clear the baggage I have, the personal baggage. So I'm clearing my attractions, I like her bob hair. I'm clearing the lust, oh, she's so pretty. Uh, and I get this energy come up. I'll just sit with that lust and try and get it until it's transcended. All the things I like about her, I put, you know, I'll, I can go to the observer. Oh, I, I'm in my body, I like your bob hair. No, go to the observer. Does the, bob, does the observer like her bob No, there's no liking of the bob hair in the observer. So I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like collapsing that personal attachment to uh, liking her bob hair. So, but this is how I do it. You know, there's different aspects that the ego gets it, it attracted to and aversion. Oh, I don't like that she drinks, but I do like her bob hair. So I'm transcending that. I want to transcend all this personal, the personal lust, the personal attraction, the different things I like or don't like about her. And so eventually, like the observer, when you're in the observer, the observer doesn't have a personal attachment. The observer, you know, the observer doesn't like bob hair in particular. You know, the observer doesn't see that she's any more special than the person next to her, or whatever. As you do this, the charge and the different things you're hooking into her start to dissolve. So you're now meeting her on a regular, let's say you're dating her, meeting her on a regular basis, but you'll find that the charge and the things that, you know, the need to rescue, or the things you like or don't like, you're starting to lose those as being meaning. You know, how do, how do I know how much I'm making progress? Well, it's kind of like if the feelings are less intense, if you're noticing things or being, uh, noticing attractions less and aversions next, like I'm, notice, I'm not noticing her bob hair so much, I'm not admiring her bob hair so much. It's like when my, uh, you know, like I said, like I'm a, uh, I was a donut addict, so if there was a donut on the table, I would be fixated on that donut. You know, that, does that make sense? Or I might be just looking at her hair the whole time, you know, it's like, you know, so it's something that I, I, you know, oh, I didn't, you know, it's like, oh, you noticed, I really had to do a lot of work with her hair, but now three weeks later, it's like, it's like, it's not such a big deal, her hair, you know, so you're losing the tracking of those things. And so the aim is, by transcending all the things, all my personal baggage and my feelings and the things I like and don't like about her. Also, a very strong archetype is wanting to rescue people. You know, when you want, if I want to rescue you mm. or you, it's very personal. It cuts off a lot of light. Because I can't rescue anyone. Only God can do that. Only the, the miraculous is not me. I, I can't be the one to rescue someone. Only the absence of me can rescue someone. So if I really want to rescue someone, I have to disappear and let God do the, the rescue. So the, in the observer, there's only God present and God can perform the miraculous. If I'm trying to rescue someone, then my vibration, I haven't got the, to the extent that I have baggage, I'm actually more a hindrance to that person than a light to that person. So this is very, I think is, you know, sometimes, you know, 
uh, this is the thing and you know sometimes working with some people like mothers or whatever has been so difficult because uh, of the such strong personal need wanting which I can understand personal wanting to uh, sacrifice oneself for the child or for a lover or whatever it is but then I intuitively knew that if you really love someone if I really love someone then I'll let you go if that makes sense it doesn't mean I have to like never see you again but I don't want to be personal around you I want to be like a channel an empty channel for, to allow God's divine grace to be with that person so I have to let the payoff this is, so this is not very, this, this is why people don't like transcending work, it's not very romantic. It's like I have to let go of admiring your bob hair, you know, so it's like, so then, then the light comes through. Now, I'm talking about an extreme level. Full transcendence is like you completely let go. You don't have to go to full transcendence, but, um, you know, if someone's at a very low vibration, if someone is like, you know, really in a lot of self-harm, is really needy, really clingy, to transcend that, that's a lot of, a lot of spiritual work. Um, you can transcend that, you know, because actually the observer is not affected by needy people. The observer is not, there is no such thing of people that can drain you, the observer. But those are part of the collective belief system. So we all intuitively know, oh, that person drains everyone. We all intuitively know, like, avoid that person. You've, everyone feels tired and drained after 10 minutes with that person. So we all know that collectively and sort of people sort of like, you know, uh, you know, sort of uh, try and avoid that person because, you know, they, everyone gets wiped out uh, around that person. But you can transcend that. Uh, that is transcend. So I cancel my belief there is such a thing as, uh, as uh, what do you call it, depleting people or negative people or draining people, draining people. Cancel my belief in draining people, I'm infinite being. Okay, I'm being drained now, this person is in front of me, I'm being drained, but what's observing the draining? So you keep doing that, and then eventually they don't drain you any longer. Uh, eventually you've got no story that you need to rescue them. So to the extent that that goes, you monitor yourself over the weeks to see if is it going away. And then you know that you, basically your level of consciousness is increasing. And often I found when I transcend people, if there's a thing like, you know, I had this thing with my mother once where, you know, she, I've shared this story many times, but it's the miraculous, where um, she went to the doctor and, you know, she had diabetes and she was getting, <coughs> going towards multiple organ failure. And, uh, and the doctor said, and she said, oh, my feet are swelling up with oedema. <coughs> the doctor said, there's nothing we can do. I mean, you've got heart failure. There isn't any pill or anything. She was so distressed. She just wanted to just take a pill. She just wanted to say, just take this pill, it will help. But they said, there's nothing we can do. She came back, she was devastated that uh, the doctors had told her, there's nothing we can do. You've got heart failure, you know. So I felt like sorry for her. And I did, God did not create a demon mother. And then, and then the swelling started to go down. And she actually felt the energy for some reason. I, don't, I didn't tell her anything. I just uh, said, oh, she showed me her legs. It's like the swelling's going down. So she intuitively felt something was going on and, it, and the swelling went away in two or three days. And it was miraculous. And so for me, transcending her oedema, uh, God did not create it. The miraculous happened. So, so that's an act of great love. So one way, if you have a choice and you want to transcend, if you want to help someone who doesn't want to do spiritual work and they're draining, they're negative, suicidal, they're an addict. Uh, you can either, you can do your transcending work and le let them go and not meet them again. I think, you know, that's why I like Dr. Hugh Len. You know, I like Dr. Hugh Len because you don't have to be with the person to transcend them. They can be on the other side of the planet, they can be in a prison cell and you can still transcend them because we're, we're collect the data is collecting the collective oneness of consciousness, if that makes sense. So, if you transcend the data of our collective, of the collective consciousness, that's transcended from there. I don't know if that makes sense. There is no such thing as separation. There's no such thing as time and space. Time and space and separation don't actually exist. And what uh, avatars, saints, uh, mystics do is just they transcend the collective data and miracles and lights go out across the world. If a saint ever transcends your data, it's your lucky day, you know, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to do that hard work. It's pretty good. That's why people go run off 
and try and meet saints and, and avatars because, you know, I don't want to do this work. Hopefully if I just <laughs> meet you, you will do it. I didn't meet Hawkins who had, had gout and had, uh, and had a lot of illnesses and all my illnesses left after a period of time of doing what he told me to do, cancel the beliefs and everything. So it is worthwhile. So um, there is free choice. Um, generally speaking, to, if I had a girlfriend, let's say, and she was in a very dark space and I was drained and she was needy, I couldn't make the choice to transcend that. I would say it's a lot of work. I think as well, you, it's nicer being with someone who has got a positive vibration because it's easier to enjoy them. You know, like if I meet someone and I'm at a, at a normal level of consciousness and they're at a normal level, then you can actually, like, I'm a, you know, like I'm a, my history as a donut addict, it means that I wanted too much payoff from donuts. I don't know if that makes sense. I wanted too much payoff. Mm. If I just wanted very moderate, mild payoff, and I never got to the place where, you know, one is never enough, a hundred is not enough, a thousand is not enough, then in a way, you can have your donuts and get away with it. <laughs> or uh, eat your cake and get away with it. Because you don't want, you only want a little bit of pleasure, if that makes sense. So it's like, okay, I've had half a biscuit. That was relatively mildly nice. Uh, I'll leave the rest of the biscuits and get on with my day. So, uh, you know, well, I mean, for, for, for a donut addict, you know, to say that to them, they'd probably die. So we're not saying that to a donut addict. You know, you say that to an alcoholic, you know, just have half a sip, you'll be all right. You know, you, that would be like a death sentence. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to say that <laughs> to them. But for people who haven't, don't get much payoff, it's almost like they can enjoy half a biscuit. Anyway. Um, so people, so having a relationship, you know, if you, I think it's preferable to have a relationship with someone who's at least neutral or re relatively positive, <coughs> and then you can enjoy, you can enjoy the sex, <coughs> you can enjoy the kisses, you can enjoy all of that stuff, and you're not going to be like suicidal if they dump you. <coughs> uh, if you're like a, a, a like a relationship addict, i.e., you get so enmeshed with them that you think they are your life, and if they ever were to leave you, you'd want to jump off a bridge straight away, then actually you have to have a, a, quite a strong level of transcendence and spiritual work, because you, <coughs> it's almost like <coughs> you're not like other people, you know, because you get so enmeshed and you, you just give your power away and project so much onto the other person that, as, that you, I mean, it's enjoyable while it lasts, but the, the minute they dump you and say, I'm now off with, with Rudolph or whoever it is. You know, it's like, okay, I'm jumping off the bridge now. It's like, so that's like, so, so for, so, but also as well, if I was to have a relationship with someone who's suicidal, um, I think as well, um, you know, this is going to sound heartless, heartless, but I transcend it. You know, I mean, in, in, in certain places, um, I'd, I'd have to transcend so that that was, you know, I wouldn't want to be, uh, uh, that would be the way that I could be there for them and not get enmeshed in the story and the drama of it all and be a light. I wouldn't want to get personally identified like, oh, please, you know, don't do that, you know, because then I'm disconnected. I'm at low vibration. There are two people at a low vibration isn't really a pretty picture. You know, oh, I'm going to do something bad to myself and then I'm in a wreck. Oh, please don't do anything bad to yourself. It's like, that person's in darkness, I'm in, in darkness. And it's like, there is no light in the room. So it's better for me to go into the light, even if they say you're heartless, you know. You should be in tears and crying for me and I want to see your, I want to see your, I want to see your emotions. You heartless bastard, or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, like show some emotions. I'm like, I'm staying in the observers. Thank you very much. This is deep. <laughs> so, so it's like, because um, it's ne at least if you're disconnected, I'm going to try and keep the light going on in here and not get personally hooked into the story mm. that's going on. Mm.